the Imperial Japanese Navy. Yeah, there it is. Phantom of Crest, the bow, and there it is. You can yeah. see it. Symbols of royalty on warships go back centuries. That is the symbol of an Imperial warship. This means this belongs to the Emperor. We have confirmed, based on what we're seeing with the direct features visible to us in this initial look, that we are on the carrier Akagi. What we are seeing is battle damage that comes from the loss of Akagi. As we can see, there's a portion of deck which has been flipped up with the explosive pressures that were built up as the hangar deck burned. We have passed gun tubs that are very specifically tied to the plans of Akagi. Beneath this structure, we are actually seeing the cruiser-styled hull of the vessel as it was originally built and launched before it was modified and turned into a carrier. As we are indeed on the carrier Akagi, let's take a moment of silence, please, to remember the type of site we are on, an important site, a site of great service and sacrifice and the loss of lives. So let us please just take a moment of silence. You know, we can understand this as Native Hawaiians and the depth and the reverence that we hold for this place and for those who lay in the realm of Kanaloa, the god of the sea. I just wanted to share this Hawaiian proverb and it says, Lu'u lu'u hanakahi ika ua nui. Weighted down is hanakahi by the heavy rain. And this expression was much used in Hawaiian laments for the dead to express that heaviness of the heart as tears that pour like rain. And so we honor those who, who gave the ultimate sacrifice. Whether you were American or Japanese, we honor those that lay in the realm of Kanaloa, our sacred Aina Akua, and we are in reverence as we view the Akagi. So this is where Admiral Nagumo and his staff would have been when they were forced to uh, evacuate by the fires that were raging there. This is seen some pretty incredible drama. This is where, as we've said, you know, this is where the Admiral and his staff had to evacuate by climbing down. Uh, the survival of this structure, even in its damaged state, is something we hadn't been expecting. It's rather amazing to see, and even though you know, it has deteriorated and fallen in. There's still identifiable elements that clearly connect us back to that time and that point in the battle. This is a historic moment. The USS Yorktown has, has been seen back in 1998, but not nearly like this from what I understand. So I'm getting quite a good look. Well, this is considered one of the 10 most consequential naval battles in human history. When you think about it, this changed the balance mm -hmm. of the Pacific War. And with that, the future of the Pacific. Is that the five? Did you see the five? Yes. It's five. Yes. Frank just spotted the five. Wow, right in the center of the screen there. Yep. Just saw the end right there. Yeah. Right York in there, York. yeah. 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 There's some, I can see the outlines of yeah, some Yeah, I see letters. the R. Wow, that's so special to be able to see the name. We have many uh, naval servicemen of all ranks throughout the years. We know this is uh, this is an important moment in, uh, in your life, in your history, and your story as well. We heard earlier that th throughout the Navy they celebrate a Midway Day. And this is uh, so important to so many of our viewers around the world, and we thank you guys for being here. That's an incredible look, you know. One thing that's different about sea battles compared to land battles is when you go to Gettysburg or Chancellorsville to see the aftermath of those battles. But sea battles, you don't have that opportunity, and you're getting a rare chance to see the relics of a, of a sea battle. 
That's really the amazing thing for a vessel that was damaged at the Coral Sea that had 72 hours to repair at Pearl Harbor that surprised everyone by making it to the battle at midway in time and then being damaged in the battle, putting out those fires and remaining afloat yeah. for so long. And in fact, you know, I think the order was to abandon ship and uh, the Yorktown still didn't sink. Though. So when the Hammond came aboard, uh, came alongside, they were bringing on a damage crew and still trying to save the ship. Now it was a tough four days, 81 years ago, a lot of pain, a lot of sorrow, and we hope that some healing has since happened hey, to many brave men and women that were involved. And from the study of these sites, a lot of good can come, and we've already seen that with the collaboration, people coming together, people from all kinds of different institutions, nations, all working together to better understanding. Mahalo. We believe this to be the Imperial Japanese Navy aircraft carrier Kaga. And I was wondering if either Mike or Hans could tell us some of those defining characteristics that would confirm that this is actually the Kaga. First of all, it's, it was documented in part of it in 1999 and then again in 2019 with ROV dives. But what we're looking at, there's going to be some features like the casemate guns, uh, the bow and the stern, the overall length of the vessel the location of the tower and the smokestack, but also the level of damage we're seeing here is consistent with it sinking. The other carriers that were sunk were not struck as badly as this one. So e just even how low relief it is and the level of damage we're seeing is pretty fair confirmation as to the wreck that we're on. In the confusion of battle, it's, it's hard for pilots to you know, always confirm whether they have a hit or a near miss, but mm -hmm. uh, ultimately when putting together all those reports and first-hand evidence, we're looking at you know a number of bombs that struck the flight deck. The Kaga was hit early, and there are maybe four, 500 bombs that struck the deck, and 1,000 pound bomb as well. So multiple direct hits on the flight deck igniting the fires, damaging the fire suppression system, wreaking havoc, wow. really terrible fires. I think the majority of people who were lost were trapped down in the lower decks by the fires above them mm -hmm. in the hangar decks. And that's, that's a terrible fate. And it's just remarkable to me that it was, you know, less than 40 years earlier, man flew for the first time. Oh yeah. This is an, an incredibly special mission to have the capacity to do. There's a wealth of information here to understand this pivotal battle, but to be honest with you, it's not an easy thing to see these sites because in a sense, seeing what's happened to these shipwrecks, we're reliving some of the violence of the conflict and the catastrophic engagement. That was the Battle of Midway. and. I can tell you for myself, it brings up a lot of feelings beyond the mission time frame. It will take me some time to deal with, frankly. Um, it's very sobering, and we understand we're looking at locations where sailors and airmen lost their lives almost instantaneously sometimes. And so it's, it's important that we honor that and remember that, and the cultural protocols and the staff we have on board to help us understand the larger meaning of this place, Papa Hanau Mokuakea, is helping me to deal with some of those feelings. So there's a sadness to these sites. They're very striking, and I don't think any of us will ever forget them. <laughs>